All right, man, let's go ahead and jump into it. Nick in the building. All right, my G, what's going on? How you feel, man? Oh, I feel pretty good, man. This weather down south Alabama right here ain't too bad. Just trying to avoid these uh these Department of Transportation officers been chasing us down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I see that, man. I see that, and we about to we about to talk about one in particular very uh very shortly, man. But before we uh hold on, right quick, hold on. Here we go. All right, but before all that, man, Nick, why don't you go ahead and uh, start with your story, man? How, how you got started in trucking and what you used to do beforehand? Hey, well, before I got trucking, I was a cook, you know, I short order cook pretty much, and I was in at a restaurant, and I always seen trucks and family members in trucking. And I finally got to the age where I get my CDLs, and I said, I want to give it a shot. Okay. Well, I gave it a shot, and I can't get away from it since then. Been logging ever ever since. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. How's the journey so far? Oh, it's great, man. It's a, it make a good living out here. Meet some good people. Uh, take care of my family. You know, it, it, I can't complain with it. All right, all right. So, what did you? So, you say you used to be a short what short order cook, like in in five star restaurants. <laughs> Well, I worked at a country club back in my teenage years, and then uh, I went from there to a place that was, it was a little diner, kind of like a huddle house, but uh, mm -hmm. it was a separate uh, business, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked at a Ruby Tuesday, you know, just a couple little different restaurants in my time, and my dad owned one growing up, so I worked there off and on, and it just, yeah, I couldn't do what I wanted to do in life doing that, so. All right, so being the cook, man. It, I mean, you know, being a cook and everything. They, they they said there's money in cooking. Is it? Is it? Is it money in cooking for real? Uh well, it depends on which end of the spectrum you're on. You know, if you're a chef and you own up there with a the high class, yeah, there's good money in it. But as far as you know, diners and uh, local restaurants and places people go out to eat and all that, uh, it's all right. But uh, it's not what trucking can make it. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, how long ago did you get your? Uh, how, how long ago did you get your CDLs? Uh, let's see. I might as well say thirty-two and a half, and I got them when I was twenty-one. Okay, okay. So what? So you? So you three decades deep in uh in your CDL? Oh yeah, I've been I've been nonstop going. Oh, I, uh, I did a little over the road driving when I first started to get that experience and. Turned around and I've hauled chips and bark shavings and flatbed and but majority of my time spent with a load of wood behind all the logs. Okay, so you was log hauler back then. What was some of the what, what was some of the challenges you faced uh, throughout your throughout your thirty years of trucking, man? Hey, well, you know, most of it is uh pretty much uh, let's see dealing with the DOT. That's that's the main thing, you know. Um, besides that, I mean, you've got to make sure you mind your P's and Q's, keep your equipment up, you know, keep everything up to date, maintenance records, stuff like that. I mean, you're good to go then. It's, it's a good job. So. All right. So 30 years ago, did you, did you have to go to, did, did you go to trucking school or was your grandfather the end, uh, uh, chauffeur's license, what? Oh, well, 12 years ago. I started when I was 21. I'm 32 now. Oh, you 12 years so, ago. Uh, I thought I thought you said three yeah, years ago. Okay, yeah. okay, 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 12, 12 uh, years ago, you, you, you had to go through go through school. So, did you go through the, go through oh, a school or did you go through a company? I actually went through a school, a local community college where I'm from in Alexander City. They actually have a truck driving school. Mm -hmm. And I went out there and took their course and went through and got my CDLs. And from there, I actually, this was back when central refrigeration was in business. I actually went on the road for central refrigeration, working for them for a little while until I found me a local gig back home and come on right back home and ain't left since. Okay, that's what's up. So, so back then, you decided to go through a, a community college that had a, that had a CDL program. Did you pay for it out of pocket or, or did you get a grant? I got a grant. It was actually, I went up to the local um, technical school mm -hmm. and the technical department of the community college, and they actually applied me for a grant. Being that my income was so low cooking, it actually, the state paid for every bit of my schooling, and all I had to pay for was uh, my license. 
okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Do you think is 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 that still available to to people that's interested in getting their CDLs now? Oh yeah, yeah, it's still wide open, and I recommend people do it all the time. You know, it's something really it, it's really a good learning experience, and it gives you a lot of um, knowledge that you wouldn't get just jumping in a truck with a big company. Now, in your opinion, man, you you decided to go with the school route. Why? I mean, why why not go? Why not go with Swift Academy, uh, Prime? Why not go with uh, Pam and the rest of them that's offering uh, CDL training? Why 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 your research led you to just get your your license straight out? Well, for one, the school is you go through it and you have no commitment afterwards. You don't have to sign a contract. You don't have to work for them for so long or nothing. You go to the school, and from there, you're released to do. If you wanted to buy a dump truck and drive your own dump truck the next day, you could do that. Um, you know, basically, it's just it's a lot easier. And rather than going and committing or signing some contract with a big company saying, hey, I'll drive for you for this amount of time and in exchange for you to send me through school or something like that, so it, it was a lot easier for me to just stay at home and go to our local school and get all my experience I needed there in order to get my actual permit and to get my CDLs. How long now, back then, you know, uh, uh, 12 years ago, back then, how, how long was the course? Honestly, I can't even remember. It was, uh, I want to say, 14 weeks. Maybe well, I can't actually remember. It's been so long, but God, it, it was a decent course. It was Monday through Thursday, and it was from like seven in the morning to I think four o'clock in the evening. Man, for now nowadays they over here trying to knock this shit out in two in in two three four weeks, bro. Oh yeah, well, you, see, got- you know you were in the class with uh, you had about I think. You had two trucks, and each truck had about four to five students in each truck, plus an instructor. So basically what you did was after you went through all your, you know, your book and knowledge part, you got in the truck, and you would just drive around the state of Alabama, and you would drive so far and pull over to the store and swap up with another student, and they would drive so far, and that's all you did every day was drive around the state. Man, it, that's that's some good that that's some good training right there. Do you feel that you got? Do you think with with the fourteen weeks that you guys actually put in, you you think the technical college, you know, gave, they they didn't just train you for passing the license I mean, for your CDL. Do you think they just they they trained you how to properly drive a truck? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, the instructors at the time, Mister Baker and Mister Burton, they were. I thought like they were top notch. They worked with each student. I mean, you get out there and we got our backing and cones and stuff like that. They set stuff up with uh, local factories where we could go and do uh, back up the docks, you know, do blind side backs in the docks. And they'd set up trailers in the docks we could back in between. And I mean, they were just trying to give us all kind of different situations that we might encounter. And at the same time, you know, we were getting our experience. So, for instance, just driving down the road, you know, if something come up, they were right there. They would be calm. They, you know, they, they would work with you and keeping everyone safe and teaching you everything you needed. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Shout out to, uh, and all, all of this is in Alabama. That's where you from, right? Yeah, yeah. It's in central Alabama. All right. Born and raised down in Alabama? Oh, yeah. What made you get into trucking in the first place? Hey, well, you know, I mean, I just, I've had family members in it here and there, and I've known plenty of people that's done it, and I finally just one day, I was like, you know, I want to make some good money. I'm from a little small town. I mean, you can't make the money that you can make in trucking just to any job in town. I was like, well, I want to do something I can make a career out of, that I can make money, and I can, you know, live the dream. I can get my money, get me a family, you know, get me a house, get me some land. And just keep, you know, moving forward in life. I didn't want to get stuck in the same spot of paying rent every month and not owning nothing. So I said, well, I'm going to do it. So I jumped in it feet first and been going ever since. Now, now, throughout your 12 years, how, how many companies you, you, you drove for before you got to the one you're at now? Oh, uh, 
really not many. I want to say maybe a total of six. Was you and um was, was you fired from I, was you fired from any of them? Nope. Oh, never okay. been fired. I've never quit on the spot. Every company I've ever left, I put a two to three week notice in. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. All right, so you, uh, you, you know, I've seen your TikTok. Uh, let, let's talk about let, let's talk about your social media for a second, man. Why, why did you choose uh, TikTok as the platform of choice? Why, why not Instagram, YouTube, you know, Facebook? Why, 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 why you, why you on TikTok? Well, I had a Facebook, and I mean, I get on there and cut up from time to time, but. It's mostly, you know, family oriented and it's just mostly my family. And I mean, they see logging stuff, me posting logging stuff all day, every day. They kind of get tired of it. And so when TikTok come out at first, I was like, man, that's a kid's app. I ain't right. messing with that. Right. right. Well, you know, after I got on it and got to messing around with it, next thing you know, I'm making TikToks every day out here. And I got people I see in the middle talking about, what's going on, log holler? And I ain't got no clue who they are, but hey, let's talk. Let's see who you are. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, TikTok, uh, TikTok, a kids app, but you know, a whole bunch of grown ups just came in and just, just took it over, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still surprised as, as the. Um, as the amount of adults that's on this app that's supposed to be for kids, <laughs> you know, kids oh, just yeah. making, I'm, I'm just making limp sync, right. You know, just making limp sync, lip sync videos, man. This, this is so crazy. Yep. So, all right. So, <laughs> so throughout, you know, you haven't worked, uh, <laughs> you, you haven't worked that many, you know, that many jobs throughout your uh, 12 years in trucking. What, what have you seen out here within your twelve years, man? What 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 kind of what kind of stuff that you can that that you can tell us? What what, what what's some of the craziest? Uh, what was the crazy story uh, that well, you came across? I had one car come around me on the interstate. Guy come around me just blind. As soon as he come around me, he jumped over in front of me. I guess didn't see the truck in front of me. It was over the road van truck. Ran into the back of him, got loose, and did about six or seven flips in midair directly in front of my truck wow. before he finally landed on the side of the road. Luckily, he landed on all the tires, and by the time we all got stopped, he was already out of his car without a scratch on him. Wow, that's crazy. Have you like when you first started when you first started driving back, you know, twelve years ago, man, uh how how was how how was it your first time going out by yourself, and and well no yeah go go ahead and answer that and then I'll ask you the the caveat question. It, it was scary. I won't lie. I tell everybody that fishing with logs, and I tell everybody that starts in logging, is scary. Don't look in your mirrors. That's one thing they teach you in school: is always keep the track behind you, keep looking in your mirrors. But when you first start out logging, you look back there and you see that trailer leaning left and leaning right, and you slow down to 30 mile an hour going around the curve, that, that stuff, it, it gets you. It turns your stomach upside down to start with. But once you've been doing it for a while, you don't even think about it after that. Kind of, kind of, kind of get you, kind of get you scary when it, after watching that uh, first after watching that first Final Destination movie when that, well, no, I think that was the second one, was it? Yeah, I think it was the second one where the laws oh, actually yeah. came I have off the truck. About that all the time. Yeah, that's just. Yeah, people tell me about that all the time. They talk about, if I keep behind the log truck, all I think about is Final Destination. You know, right? And sometimes this stress is tight. And I said, well, we try to keep them as tight as we can, but. No matter how you look at it, if a truck turns over, them straps ain't gonna hold them logs on there. They can only hold so much. God damn it, man! Uh, so <laughs> back, uh, back again. So you know, at that time when you started, while you was driving, have you ever been in? Ha, have you yourself been in an accident? And if not, have you seen an accident that probably that you probably said to yourself, "Nah, this this ain't for me." Knock on wood, I haven't been yet, and I don't want to jinx myself on it. But I have seen plenty where, you know, people I know, deer run out in front of them and they run over the side of the road and lose control and turn it over. Or 
uh, car pull out in front of them and they didn't have no choice but to hit the ditch because majority of the people I know, I mean, if a car pulls out in front of them, they're going to look for the nearest ditch or a field or whatever in order to not kill whatever fool pulled out in front of them. You and know, you, you, you would think, you, you now, you, you would think that. You would think that, like, you know, like, we as we go into school, you know, the instructors would tell us, like, you know, instead of, uh, you know, killing that family of four, whatever, whatever, you know, you want to sacrifice yourself. But some of these guys out here that's driving today, man, they, they mentality is fucked up, though. I mean, they just. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, you know the old saying, every, every bunch has bad apples. Mm-hmm. And there's some drivers out there that make drivers just look like the worst people in the world, and then there's some drivers out there that you know mind their P's and Q's. Mm. That's what's up, man. All right, so we 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 out here rolling. You, uh, I did a I did a I did a well, it was like you know the minute uh, video about uh, my home state coming out with a new, uh, with a new system and scales on, you know, they portable scales. You did a TikTok showing that portable scale in action. Talk to, talk to us and let us know how, how they pulled you over and, and how did these new portable scales work, man? So you, so they actually gave you, they actually gave you a ticket, even though you're you you legally running uh weight uh overweight. Yep, they gave me one for my back trailer axle. Said it was uh overweight on the back axle. You know, a log trailer, you can't move them axles and you can't control how much weight's on the back of that trailer. But they gave me a ticket for over trailer axle, and even though my gross was three thousand pounds under the limit. How how often how how often do you get tickets, man? Well, normally you try to avoid them, but it just depends. I mean, you know, for instance, like today, I was legal. We try to run legal. Mm -hmm. you, you can't control how much that wood weighs putting it on. You know, in the woods, you ain't got scales in the woods. You're just guessing. Mm -hmm. But we try to keep it legal, and like today, they just popped up out of nowhere. There wasn't no way around them. I had no choice but to go through them. That was one out of 10 places they've set up already today. And right now, they're about 15 miles down the road from where I'm at set up. Yep. They, all it is is a white truck with a camper bed on the back. And they open the doors, and the state trooper rolls up with them. And they open the doors, they pull them out of the truck, set them on the ground. And he opens his laptop on the back of the truck and goes to typing. Wow. 
That's crazy. And they and they can and they can set up pretty much everywhere. Everywhere. Do you, do you in, in your opinion, in in your opinion, do you think that's just a cash grab or do you really think they doing that for public safety? No, nah, it's nothing but a cash grab. Because like I said, you know, they, they'll chase a log truck down the well. But you won't ever see them chase an over-the-road truck down the well. But now if they got them set up already, they will weigh an over-the-road truck. But they target log trucks real heavy because they know we can't control what this weight is. We have no clue. Man, that's crazy. Uh, the, the ticket that they give you is, is that your responsibility or, or the company take care of that? Well, being that I'm a company driver, my boss man takes care of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you were on or off, then it would be your ticket. Right. It just really depends on what you have worked out with the person, you know, the logger that you're hauling off of. Sometimes the logger will take, you know, blame for it. Sometimes they tell you, Hey, that's your ticket. Now, when you so get, it all depends. Now, when you get a ticket, uh, when you get a ticket, do they make you pay that ticket right then and there? No, it, it actually my ticket now has a court date of uh, somewhere at the beginning of February. So as long as it's paid before that court date, you're fine. Oh, you can go to you. You can actually go to court and fight that. Yeah, but it ain't. It's a waste of your time. Is it? Yeah, I was about to ask you if it's if it if it's worth it. I've been to court to fight one before where I was two miles away from the mill mm -hmm. and they had me overweight. I got two miles down the road to the mill and was underweight. And the judge told me, we're going to side with our state scales. We're not sure about the mill scales. Wow. So you can either pay the ticket or surrender your license and spend your time in jail. Fuck. Do you, uh, now you, now <laughs> as you, you know, as you say, you're rolling laws and you're not sure of the, of the weight. So do you guys go through the cash scales at the, at the truck stop or is it worth it or is it not worth it? Well, we don't even have a truck stop around here with cash scales. And you know, what's we're 88 on state and county roads, but once we get out on the interstate, it drops all the way down to 80,000. So we avoid the interstate. You know, most roads we run are back roads or state highways and, Hey, there, there ain't nowhere to wait before, you know, between the woods and the mill. So you're just pretty much guessing. <laughs> Man, that shit crazy. I cannot believe that uh, that that they actually gave you a ticket. You was already legal, and they still oh, yeah. and they still gave you a ticket. They man, so they, so that by them doing that, that's that's not a safety thing. That is just a cash thing because he could have just let you go with that. Yep, because you know he, he even said it himself. You know he knows I can't control how much do all that. You know we got our logs and we all on there and they hang off the back. Well, that's going to add weight to the back. So just about seven out of ten times, if you're not overweight, they're going to get you on action. Oh, wow, that's crazy, man. So driving, uh, so driving these logs <laughs> up and down. This, you, 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 uh, what you you say you home just about every day, or you're regional or what? I'm home every day. I leave out every morning, and I go back home, and I lay in my bed every night. Okay, that's what's up. And how long now? The company that you work for, you say you're a company driver. So is that like a mom and pops deal, or? <laughs> Is that a, a a company company or what what kind of company you work for? <clears throat> well, I have worked for a major company that had like twenty something trucks and ten different crews, and mm -hmm. you know it was big deal. I had you all your health benefits and retirement and all that. But the one I'm with now is just a pretty much a mom and pop. My boss man's the uh, the owner of the company, and then his son you know works in the woods, and then a family friend works in the woods with them, and. I'm the only company truck they got, and it. Uh oh, I think I lost you. So it's just okay. a little small family. Okay, yeah, it's just the one I work for now is just a little small family organ, and that, in my opinion, that's better to work for than a large company. Of course, of course, you get and, and you're on what W two or ten ninety nine. Ten ninety nine. Oh, okay, okay. So you just take care of uh, your taxes and your uh, and your uh, 
your uh, benefits and all like that. Uh, running logs, yep. man. You you don't you 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 don't need no special endorsements or anything like that to run logs, right? No, you don't have to have anything but your uh, whatever class that is. Heck, I can't even remember it anymore. I've had mine so long, but you just need your standard CDL is all you need. All right, all right. So how how does how does one find a, a company like that? You know, I mean, there's like these specialized companies out here. I mean, you know, with with all these uh with all these trucking companies out here that's advertising on Facebook, on Instagram, and all like that. You know, big companies, JB Hunt, FedEx, uh, you know, Avery. How 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 can one find one of these small specialty companies, man? Like 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 uh livestock haulers, log haulers, um, uh, you know, heavy haulers and stuff like that, man. How how can one find a company like that? Well, a lot of it has to do with uh, just the people you know and your reputation. I mean, your name is everything. If you go out and, you know, you, you give a bad image and you earn your name, it's hard to get a job anywhere. But if you got a good image, you know, you're known to work, you're known to take care of your equipment, you know, you're a good worker, people will talk. And that's pretty much word of mouth. But, um, you know, as far as in just got to go out and find them. I mean, that's the best way. They don't advertise. uh it's just, hey, you know, like I've been with these people for a few years now, and I mean, I ain't have no complaints. And it's hard to find jobs like this because, you know, they take care of their employees, so they don't have a high turnover. What was So how, how long you been driving for them? <laughs> I've been driving for this company for almost three years now. Uh, what, <laughs> where, where, they, where they start you at when you, when you first started with them? Well, when I first started with them, I was right. They called me and said, "Hey, you want to get back in a truck?" And I said, "I do," because I was actually in the woods working. I was running a skitter, and I was, you know, trying to hang out in the woods for a little while and see how it was. I was like, you know, I, I like my truck, so they called me and said, "You ready to get back in a truck?" I said, "Yep." They said, "All right, then. Well, let's go get one at the dealership." So we went straight to the dealership, got this twenty twenty thirty nine hundred. Put a headache rack on it and started hauling. Man, they did all that for you, man? Oh, yeah, which back in the past with another company that I worked for, I was a contract driver, and I hauled off of them and worked at it, and they knew how I liked to work, how I liked to run, and they, they knew that, you know, I, I'd get in the truck and and so that's that's what I do. I, I get in here and I treat it as if I owned it myself, and I gotta pay the bills on it. That's what's up, man. The W nine with the sleeper. What, what's uh ten speed? Ten speed. See, mine ain't even got a sleeper. It's a uh, day cab, extended day cab with a ten speed in it. It's got the uh, X fifteen Cummins motor in it. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, well, uh, well, man, yo, uh, what's your name on? Go ahead and shout out your TikTok, man. It's Log Hauler Twenty Twenty. You can't miss it. Log Hauler, appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me, man. Uh, what's what advice would you give these guys out here that's that that's uh that's running these highways and byways? What advice you would give them when they come across a a portable scale house, man? And the best advice you can get is just hang on, cause they gonna get you one way or another. <laughs> That's what's up, man. <laughs> All right, man. You definitely, uh, you you definitely, uh, 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 I forget what I was gonna say. Uh man, you're you're definitely a citizen, man. I really do appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me, man. Thank you very much. I know you're very busy and you're running right now. So again, stay safe out there, driver. And uh, we'll get together again uh, soon. But you wanna be fed, you see it.